So we did our complex numbers here using this idea that I is the square root of negative one. And we're gonna need that idea to solve some quadratics and also some radical equations. All right, so um, first, Let's solve some quadratic equations. So the quadratic formula is x equals the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So I guess that's spoiler alert. I'm going to give you some that don't factor. So we're going to need to use the quadratic formula to solve some of these. And you can remember that this is, you know, we're finding the roots of the function is one way it's put. Um, if you had a, a function where it said f of x equals that, they are the x-intercepts. That might be another way it's presented. And they're all done the same way. So let's say, for example, we wanted to just solve the equation. 4x squared plus 20x plus 29 is equal to zero. All right, well, that's going to be pretty ugly to try and factor. And I guess I already gave it away that this doesn't factor. I'm going to plug this into the quadratic formula. So remember, our a value is 4 our B is 20 and our C is 29. So I'm gonna get X equals, uh, opposite of B, so that's gonna be minus 20, opposite of 20, plus or minus the square root of B squared, so that's 20 squared which will be 400, but we'll do that in our next step. Minus four times our A, which is four, and times our C, which is 29. All over two times four. So first part is setting it up correctly. Now, I'm gonna find this thing right here, the number underneath the square root because that tells me a lot about the problem. If that's a positive number, that means I get two answers, two real answers. If that number that's highlighted there is a negative number, that means I'm going to get complex solutions or answers that have I in them. Um, and in fact, if that's a perfect square, it means the problem factors also. All right, so it's so special that it has its own name called the discriminant um, and you know, we'll get into much more of that later, but I'm gonna plug this into my calculator. 20 squared minus four times four times 29. So, all right, there we go. All right, so 20 squared minus four times four times 29, right? So I have a discriminant of negative 64. So I have X equals negative 20 plus or minus the square root of negative 64. Don't forget it's still under the radical all over two times four, which is eight. And now I'm gonna keep rolling. So remember the square root of negative 64, that's going to be eight I. So I have X equals negative 20 plus or minus eight I all over eight. And it looks like those are all even, so I could divide them all by two. So I get negative 10 plus or minus four I over four, I know those are all even also, so I could have divided these by four, right? 
So x is going to be negative 5 plus or minus 2i all over 2. So again, the reason we did those complex numbers in our last class, because <clears throat> we had a negative discriminant, we needed it so we could go on and come up with our solutions, okay? And you could write your answer this way. You also could split it up. Uh, you could also write it as, that would be negative five over two plus or minus uh, two over two I would just be I. So that would be another way that you could write it. And either way would be acceptable. All right, let's do another one. If I'm going too fast, let me know, because I know there is a lot of writing here. And you guys have done this before, so I'm going kind of quickly. But if, I, if you're not able to keep up with the writing, please let me know. So let's uh, solve 4x squared minus 16x plus 21 is equal to zero. So quadratic formula, x will be 16, because it's the opposite of b, plus or minus the square root of negative 16 squared. Notice I put that in parentheses, okay? So b squared minus four times four times 21 all over two times four, so two A. So I'll use my calculator again to find the discriminant. So I'm gonna do negative 16 squared minus four times four times 21. Okay, so I type it in just the way it looked. And of course, the calculator will follow the orders of operations. So I think I have it in there correctly. I get a discriminant of negative 80. So x equals 16 plus or minus the square root of negative 80 all over 8. All right, well, now I got to deal with that square root of negative 80. So I'm going to write a little side note over here. So remember, we had some of these on our homework. First thing we want, it's not 81, it's 80. First thing we want to do is poke out the eyes. So it's going to be square root of 80 i. And then I'm going to do a prime factor tree. And so in doing that, you know, we said in our last class, you also could just look for large perfect squares that go into that, or some of you prefer to do the factor tree, doesn't matter to me. In either case, we should get four root five I. So I have X equals 16 plus or minus four root five i all over eight. And I can cancel all those or reduce them by a factor of four. So I get x equals four plus or minus the square root of five i over two. All right, any questions before we jump to some radical equations? All right, so the only wrinkle with these is that we now have some complex solutions. We have I's in our answer. All right, so next we're going to solve some radical equations.
those of course are equations that have square roots in them, or they could be higher roots also, but we're gonna do square roots. So let's say we have the square root of x plus 56 plus 12 is equal to 20. All right, to solve these, we want to square both sides, but not right away, because we have to get rid of the radical. And to do that, we have to get the radical by itself first. So I'm going to move that 12 over. I have to move everything away from the radical first, so then I can square both sides to get rid of the radical. So first thing I'll do is subtract 12 from both sides. So I have the square root of x plus 56 is equal to 8, because 20 minus 12 is 8. Now that I have the radical by itself, now I can square both sides. And so on the left side, I just get x plus 56. And on the right side, 8 squared is 64. And so I subtract 56 from both sides and x comes out to be 8. <clears throat> All right, now, one thing that we got to make sure we do is when we're solving radical equations, radical equations <clears throat> are notorious for extraneous solutions. So we do want to make sure we check our work. So I'm going to take the 8, plug it in there for x, and see if it works out. And so if I do that, I'm going to get the square root of 8 plus 56, which is 64, and see if that works. Well, that is 8 plus 12, which does equal 20. So it does check out. 8 is our solution. But we do want to check those because we will occasionally get extraneous solutions for radical equations. All right, one more here. <clears throat> All right, for our next one, let's say we had the square root of 15 minus 3x minus 1 is equal to x. Notice that minus 1 is not under the radical. So just like our last problem, the first thing we want to do is get the radical by itself. So I'll add the one to the other side. I have the square root of 15 minus 3x is equal to x plus 1. And now I'm going to square both sides. But be careful on that right side. Left side's the easy part, I get 15 minus 3x. But the right side, I have to foil that. Okay, I'm going to foil that on the right side, and that's going to be x squared plus 2x plus 1. So now I have a quadratic. I'll move everything to the right side. So 0 is equal to x squared. Looks like it's plus 5x and minus 14. And maybe I want to use the quadratic formula, uh, or I could try and factor this. And you know, my rule, I think, is try and factor it for 20 seconds. If you can do that, great. And if not, then just use the quadratic formula. But this one factors pretty nicely into x plus 7 times x minus 2. And so x comes out to be negative 7 or positive 2. But, of course, don't forget, we want to check our answers. So if I plug negative 7 in for x, 
I'm going to get the square root of 15 and negative 3 times negative 7 would be positive 21. Minus 1 is equal to negative 7. Well, look at that. That's not going to work. Because the square root of 36, which is 6 minus 1, does not equal negative 7. Therefore, that answer is extraneous, and we have to throw that guy out. So negative 7 is an extraneous solution. I'm going to try 2, because sometimes they're both extraneous. So that would give me the square root of 15 minus 3 times 2, which is 6, minus 1 equals 2. So that looks like it's a square root of 9 minus 1 equals 2. That is OK. And so 2 is an acceptable answer. All right, any questions on the radical equations? I have a question. Yeah. Um, I don't get what you did on, like when you did the x squared plus 5x minus 14. Yep. I don't get how you got that. How I got this? Yeah. Yeah. So um, I, I noticed that it was, I noticed that it was quadratic. So I just wanted to get everything on one side. So I moved everything to the right. This x squared is that x squared. I added 3x there. So 2x plus 3x was 5x. And then I subtracted 15 from both sides. And 1 minus 15 was the negative 14. Oh, OK. Thank you. Okay. So I was just getting all my like terms, uh, everything out, combining things on one side. Any other questions?